Thank you all for coming and for your interest in discovering Buddhism. This is uh, really exciting. We're so happy to see so many of you uh, online at six o'clock on a Sunday. It takes a lot of effort. Thank you. <laughs> um, just to give you an idea of the running order for today, um, we'll have a few words from our director, Venerable Fabienne. Um, and then I will take a few seconds to go over the structure of the course and some of the key information that you'll need. Um, just reiterating some of the points that you've probably already read on the website. And then we'll hand over to Geshe Namdak, who's going to be teaching the course. Um, and he'll be sharing a bit of information about uh, the content and the syllabus, what you can expect there. And then we'll open up for any questions that you might have towards the end. Does that sound all right? Good. <laughs> all right then. So I'll hand over to... Venerable Fabienne, uh, who will need my mic. <laughs> Thank you, Camlo. Um, so first of all, it's so wonderful to see um, many new faces and many new names. So we're really, really happy that you have interest in just exploring the option of um, whether you feel that discuss studying, discovering Buddhism um, is for you or not and whether it's the right time for you or not. But first of all, I want to thank Geshe Namdak um, because without Geshe La, of course, we wouldn't be even having this open house and we wouldn't be even exploring this opportunity. So um, Geshe La, who's mm. just here, huge thanks yeah. for yeah. teaching, agreeing to teach Discovering mm. Buddhism. It's the third. Um, it's the third multi-year in-depth course that um, that Jamyang is starting and that Geshe is leading. So, a year and a half ago, we started basic program, and now um, six months ago, we started exploring Buddhism, and now it's discovering Buddhism. And so, we're really, really, really fortunate to have a teacher that's so willing to give so much. And we're really, really happy that um, that you're thinking about it because I can just share from my own experience, but also from the experience of students that have taken part uh, in basic program for the last year and a half, and those who've started exploring Buddhism, that the opportunity to feel part of a cohort, a group that's committed to studying and committed in the long term um, under the guidance of a teacher like Geshe Namdak is a phenomenal experience. I am so grateful at a very personal level to have the opportunity and I'm really, really happy that um, you guys will have potentially if you choose to participate that opportunity. It's a phenomenal experience and so I can only really encourage you. I can't imagine anything more valuable than um, joining a group and being on that adventure. It really, truly is um, life transforming. I mean, I, I think that's not an, an overstatement. But anyway, so I will pass on to Geshe La and um, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to pass on to Kamlo. And uh, I hope you enjoy this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Venerable Fabienne. I couldn't agree with those words, those words, those words anymore. Um, all right, so let me just uh, share my screen. Where are we? Okay, so discovering Buddhism 2022. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> all right. So yeah, this, uh, as I said at the beginning, this is just to reiterate um, some of the points that you've probably already read on the website, um, you know, but just to verbalize it so that it, everything is clear. Um, teachings will take place on Thursday evenings, that's UK time. Um, there'll be two to three classes per module, um, and each class will last for about one and a half hours. Um, at the end of each module, there'll be a review session with uh, one of our wonderful teaching assistants, some of whom I know are on the call today. Um, 
and we'll also have additional review days in January, February, and March. And there'll be break months in April and December. Um, this is just a little snapshot of the learning platform that you'll be using. So uh, this is where you'll have access to all of the recordings, the reading material, exercises, and any other supporting material. Um, this is a screenshot from um, the, Exploring the Exploring Buddhism course, which Venerable Fabienne referred to earlier. Um, and then we have a donation. This is a little snapshot of our donation plans as well. So um, Jamming runs on a generosity model, which means that nobody is precluded from taking part in the course um, for financial reasons but we provide recommended donations just to give you a sense of the costs that are incurred by Jamyang uh, to run the course um, and just to provide a bit of a guideline for your donation. Um, so, uh, you know, this, this information is on the website, so I won't go into it too, in too much detail. It explains how we've um, calculated the recommended donations. Um, but I just want to really emphasize that if any of these donation tiers um, are inaccessible for you, then please just um, contact me at spc at jamyang.co.uk and uh, let me know and uh, we'll figure out a donation plan that works for you. Um, in addition, um, oh, sorry, I just, uh, okay, we've got somebody else coming into the waiting room. Um, in addition to that, I wanted to mention something about our inclusivity ambassador scheme. So as part of Jamyang's commitment to um, nurturing a more diverse and inclusive community, we've come up with this scheme which has been applied to each of the long-term courses that we've started in the past two years. So Basic Program and Exploring Buddhism um, each have their own set of um, inclusivity ambassadors. Uh, these students uh, represent um, uh, currently underrepresented communities, so people of color, LGBTQ, differently abled, etc. Um, and they are sponsored by Jamyang to take part in the course, and they also are um, enrolled into a teacher, uh, sorry, facilitator training uh, program, which means that. Um, as they go through the course, they also develop the skills that will enable them to step into roles as meditation leaders, uh, teaching assistants, course facilitators in the future. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, then um, you can find the application form uh, on the Discovering Buddhism page on the website. Um, should be pretty easy to find. Um, and if you do we decide to apply for the Inclusivity Ambassador scheme? Um, make sure you um, don't, don't, don't enroll into the program in the general registration until you've received the outcome of your application for the Ambassador scheme. Um, yeah, hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then uh, just let me know and I can, I can try and put it another way. And help us spread the word, Venerable Fabien says. Yeah, if you know anybody who would be interested in, in this scheme, um, you know, has got an interest in Buddhism and comes from uh, one of these underrepresented communities, um, then yeah, let them know, because um, this might be something that they're interested in. Okay. And last thing to say is that registration is open. Actually, actually, there's a slide missing. <laughs> the slide that is not there. Um, uh, I, the probably questions will come up about assessments. Uh, so Discovering Buddhism does have assessments, um, which are mandatory for those people who want to get certification, um, but they're not mandatory if you don't want certification. Um, but I'll just say, you know, as a student on one of the long-term programs here at Jamyang, that it's a really, really helpful way to review the material, and that's the main purpose, is to help you to get the most out of the uh, content that you're going to be studying. Um, so don't be put off. <laughs> okay, and yeah, last thing to say is that registration is now open. So, um, you know, after this, um, once you've heard from Geshe Namdak and um, put any questions to us that you might have, uh, have a quick scan of the uh, information that's on the website again 
And if after all of that you decide that you are ready to enroll, then registration is open. So you can do that now. All right. I think, um, I think that's it from me. And now I'll hand over to Geshe Namdak, who will tell us a little bit about mm. what we can expect from the course itself. Geshe-la, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Over to you. All right. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. And uh, yeah, thank you for your interest because um, yeah, discovering Buddhism can be done in various ways. Yeah, you can just follow a talk here, follow a talk there, read something, and you try to discover it. Yeah. So that's one option. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, you know, in order to get a particular good understanding of of, of the whole Buddhist part if you invest a little bit more time and do it in a structured way, like a program, then there's much more benefit, right? And in a short period of time, uh, in uh, discovering Buddhism is just two years, then you get actually a complete overview of the spiritual part, you know, from scratch until enlightenment. So that means that investing in, 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 in a program like this will bring a uh, great benefit after you complete it. it because, as, you know, I've, in my own experience, I mean, I did 20 years instead of two, <laughs> but I, I've also met a lot of people and I've seen that people will invest in, in, in longer term of study, right, than their understanding of, of the Buddhist doctrine, and especially if you're more interested in the practical aspects. Is, is much more superior than if you just do a little bit of, you know, shopping here and there, or you do a little bit of course or, or talks here and there, you know. So that's the kind of great benefit. We also hear from uh, the students in the other two programs we run here of basic program and exploring Buddhism. So that's a great benefit, yeah, and I have to, uh, yeah, that you commit yourself for a particular period, and that helps a lot. And it's sometimes difficult, but so many things are difficult in life, right? So <laughs> what we try to do here is in two years, and if you like to do assessments and you attend the, the review sessions, it becomes a complete package. A complete package we know just by listening and be passive in the aspect. You get some information, but if you use that information to digest, and that's why we schedule this kind of review sessions and that's why you have assessments it's not like a crazy exam or something like that it's just for the purpose for us to review the material right so that whole package gives a very uh, good fundamental basis to not only listen to it think about it because not only will we present the material but also we do meditations together so you learn how to do it yourself the material you can uh, digest by, by reading, so there will be suggested readings in between the sessions, and then we have this kind of groups which works very well uh, with the other programs we're running here. That means that we moved online since the pandemic started, but even online it's possible to create the kind of family feeling. Yeah, So that's also quite important. Those who live locally, of course, it's best to physically attend, Yeah, that is always uh, has a great impact, you have to be uh, realistic. But if that's not possible and you live further away and you follow it online, then to have this kind of, um, you know, teaching assistance and we, we, we do kind of review sessions, it brings a kind of group together. Yeah, so the first DB we did here, that's the first thing I did uh, after my arrival here, uh, starting 2019. And it was before the online period, though, but uh, it was very nice to see that the group start to form as a kind of little family, you know. <laughs> so uh, that's a very nice uh, aspect as well, because we share the same interest and we like to do the same kind of course. And then mixing together with the same interest uh, brings great benefit, yeah, because, yeah, we're social human beings, so it's good to have friends, right? So <laughs> that aspect is also a part of, of, of these kind of programs. Then the content of uh, the programs, as Kamala already indicated, we do it on Thursday evening. So we have three Thursday evenings a month. We cover the material uh, together with some suggested readings. And then one Thursday of the month is then uh, done in a review uh, kind of style. Yeah, so you not only just 
gather the information, but also you play with it, right? Then there will be uh, r there will be questions or, or kind of I mean homework or, or kind of questions that helps us to 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 understand the material better, right? And during the the three Thursdays when we explain it, we will also do a meditation together. Yeah, so also that's a big part of it to contemplate uh, what we are studying. So that's more or less the structure of 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 the days, and then the subjects is what we call the Lamrim, or the stages of the path to enlightenment. So the Lamrim, or the stages of the path to enlightenment, is a kind of a very, very uh, structured way of understanding the Buddhist path. Yeah, so that starts with kind of the potential of our mind. Yeah, so we have to see what we actually can do with our consciousness, what is possible. Yeah, so that starts with... Um, uh, Aspects of, of you know eliminating destructive emotions, transforming the mind, become a happier human being, right? So it talks about essential aspects of our human potential, so to say. And then we enter a little bit in the spiritual part uh, of, of Buddhism, although it's called discovering, but is we touch it's a kind of a summary of the of the spiritual part, so to say. Yeah. So that means that from from knowing our potential we going to see that we're very fortunate to have this potential, for example. And we're very fortunate to have interest in these kind of aspects of the mind and interest in this aspect of, of spirituality. And then we take uh, the essence of that and try to move in a spiritual direction to, to walk towards what we then call, you know, precious human rebirths, liberation and enlightenment, right? So that means that um, yeah, subjects like precious human rebirth, death and impermanence, you know. Buddhism is, as you know, uh, tries to understand reality. If you don't like to understand reality, you might up into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, for example, death and impermanence, we always joke around, and you will see that I'm quite an easygoing personality. And yeah, sometimes joke about death and impermanence, and that's an aspect of reality. But if you just only get uh, negative about it and, and you get down about it, that doesn't bring any benefit because we're going to die anyway, right? So <laughs> if you know how to play with it, it's, it's a very healthy way to deal with that aspect of life. And it is also true not only for death and impermanence, it's also true to suffering we're experiencing, mental, physical, right? So we go also over those aspects, right? That we take the essence, now we have the potential uh, with us, right? Uh, and then we try to see the different types of unwanted suffering of, of, of the body, of the mind, mental difficulties and physical difficulties. And what is the cause of all this, right? So the Buddhist part is very logical, you know? That's... I. Was a, yeah, I studied hydrology, and that is mathematics and statistics. So it's a very scientific background. Entering into Buddhism at all, wow. You know, I, I'm not going to sell Buddhism today, okay? But it's just a personal experience. Then at all, you can question anything you like. It's all based on reasoning. This makes sense. And it's in one, one way, it's true, right? Also, that if you analyze that, what is actually causing all this suffering? Yeah, so the Buddha very clearly set out that there are destructive emotions, there's actions related with those destructive emotions, and that causes problems in life, right? And where is it rooted? It's all rooted in a concept of what we call ignorance, or grasping at a very concrete concept of I am mine. Yeah, so that creates this suffering. So then the Buddha said, okay, this is suffering, this is the cause of suffering, then can I do something about it? If we cannot do anything about our problems, then we're wasting our time here. We might as well go for a walk and try to enjoy ourselves, right? So, but it's possible to change the mind. Even in neuroscience, we know, you know, neuroplasticity is, 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 is being proven, right? So that means that we can change, yeah? And we can eliminate the causes for suffering and that means that we actually create more happiness in the future. Yeah, so the future, the past is the past. We're not that much interested in the past. Um, some people, oh, I want to know what you are in previous lifetimes, something like that. <laughs> That's not of interest. We're only interested in the future. Yeah, so that means um, 
Um, that, yeah, that was the Buddha's main interest. And then see what are the methodologies, what are the methods to lead us beyond suffering. Yeah? So it's a very sophisticated part, basically, of knowing the problem, seeing the cause of the problem, knowing the methodology to eliminate the cause of problem. If you eliminate the cause of the problem, the problem will not come into being. Right? So that's a kind of uh, yeah, logic reasoning behind this process. Uh, I myself, as I said before, have a scientific background, so we bring in science as well. Because we're going to talk not only about suffering, about destructive emotions, also we're going to talk about a subject called karma, right? cause and effect relationships. Even within the, 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 you know, the world of scientific findings in biology or in, in neuroscience or in, in quantum mechanics, we see a lot of similarities. And that's why we have here at Jamyang also a project called Science and Wisdom Life. Yeah, so we meet with scientists, we have dialogues, uh, as Buddhism is, you know, basically is a science of the mind and, and a philosophy. Right? So also the presentation of discovering Buddhism generally is a spiritual part but it touches upon scientific relationships. Yeah, so uh, even as Holmes Dalai Lama said, you know, if science proves something that is different from a particular scripture, then we can follow science, no issue. So Buddhism is extremely open. We want to know ultimate reality. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the subjects, you know, the four noble truths of, of, of what is suffering, what is the cause of suffering, how do I abandon it? Yeah, and the true paths leading to the abandonments. Then we talk about uh, karma, or, you know, the law of cause and effect. And then we can relate it very well with, with scientific findings. And in a similar way, uh, we're going to talk about ultimate reality. And why is it so important? Because all our problems are fundamentally rooted in a kind of ignorance of not knowing reality, so to say. Yeah, so we come to that in great detail and depth. And this aspect of ultimate reality, the philosophy behind it, has a lot of common ground with modern findings in, in, in quantum mechanics, and especially in the field of quantum gravity. Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. So we actually go from our seeing our potential and then examining what's happening with us in life and seeing the different types of suffering of different parts of cyclic existence, yeah, or what we call samsara, and actually how to get out of samsara, how to get out of this cycle of, of continuously types of, of rebirth. So we're also going to touch about very, I would say, uh, challenging subjects, right? So, be, you know, just also have to have a, you have to have a kind of open mind, not saying, oh, this doesn't exist, but check it out. Does it exist or maybe it doesn't exist? That openness is there, and there's always question. Uh, there's always opportunity to questions, and yeah, I really like sometimes the questions more than talking about the things, <laughs> yeah, because that clarifies a lot, you know. And um, the Buddha said logic is extremely important. It's more important than scriptural reference. So that means that the emphasis will be on that as well to examine what is ultimate reality, because we're going to touch about subjects like past and future lifetimes, for example, right? From the Buddhist perspective of logic, from the scientific kind of findings uh, as well, yeah? And, and the different types of suffering and the cause of this suffering. And then also about very uh, constructive forms of emotions like compassion, yeah? So in order to achieve liberation or nirvana, we need to have a mind that wishes that state, right? So that mind that wishes to achieve nirvana can only be generated by contemplating things we don't like to, uh, to meet again in the future. So that's we contemplate suffering and impermanence. And some people say, oh, those Buddhists, they always meditate on impermanence and death and suffering. That must be so unhappy. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> actually, it's the opposite. Because if you understand reality, you can face it much better. You can deal it much better. And that's a lot of scientific evidence with, you know, with uh, what is called the post-traumatic stress disorder that it's much less present in, for example, the Tibetan community, although they have been through a very difficult time during the Chinese occupation, yeah, and even different things that happened in prison, uh, people mentally very strong, and there's a reason for that, you know.
So that means that we gonna talk also about not only a wish to get out of samsara yeah, and achieve uh, liberation or nirvana and how to do that, but also how to actually to become a Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings. How to generate this kind of compassion, how to generate uh, love and kindness, how to generate a mind that goes to the far extent to wish to achieve enlightenment in order to help others to free, uh, yeah, to become free from suffering. Yeah, so it's kind of a complete Buddhist part within two years being presented in in the form of what we call this Lamrim or the stages of the path to enlightenment. So yeah, it's a very um, yeah, it's a, it's an amazing uh, part, and you, it's not that if you do this. It's not that we're going to make you Buddhist or something like that. <laughs> so that's also very important to know, right? There are secular and universal aspects of Buddhism that can be studied and practiced by Buddhists or not Buddhists. So this course has a lot of aspects of the actual spiritual part itself. But even that spiritual part itself, you don't have to become a Buddhist to study it or, or to put it into practice, right? So... And conversion is never good. Yeah? So only when people have examined it well and think, oh, this is really something for me, then they can make a decision, right? But uh, you don't have to become Buddhist or something, or as soon as you make your registration, you put a stamp on top of you, <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? So that means you can do this course in two different ways. You can do it as a Buddhist practitioner, but also just as, as uh, try to understand the Buddhist part as a non-Buddhist. Yeah? So that's uh, both options are possible. Yeah? And I will indicate throughout the course what are more universal aspects and what are more the spiritual inclined aspects for those who really like to follow, like uh, what a Buddhist normally does. Right? So we go over those things as well. Yeah. And you can always ask questions and... Yeah, uh, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, I would almost say we're gonna have fun, <laughs> in the sense that fun because you go in a spiritual path to eliminate suffering, right? So it's actually, um, yeah, a part to happiness. That's what it is. Yeah, in a discovering aspect, but still, it's it's called discovering Buddhism, but it's it's very profound because even uh, more experienced. Buddhist practitioners or meditators whatsoever, they use the same structure as the models as we have here, but then only they go a little bit more in depth by using more other kind of forms of scriptures to be studied. But the structure itself is the same. So it's a very profound structure of, of, of uh, the whole spiritual part. Yeah, so yeah, if you have any questions, then uh, of course we open to that and then you can, uh, after the session of today, make up your mind, check it out, and make a decision, right? So that's, uh, yeah. Uh, but I can see that, yeah, the first course I did with uh, people here, uh, yeah, most people find it quite beneficial because um, it gives you a complete overview of the Buddhist path. And on a personal level, people change, you know, because you understand reality much better than before, right? And then if you discuss it with others, as we do in, in the review sessions, then it open up, opens up more and, and you can share your experience. And then it becomes a kind of, yeah, uh, I said before that Buddhism is not, is not a religion as such, right? It's a way of life or the science of the mind with, with some philosophy with it, right? So that helps us actually to become better human beings. That's what it's, uh, what it's what for. And then all the way up, to that potential of, of uh, enlightenment. Yeah, so that's uh, more or less, I think, what I had to say, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Keshela. Yeah. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh. Okay. Yes, so if anybody has any questions, then feel free to ask them now. You can do that by clicking on the reactions button, button on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and raising your hand um, and I will come to you oh and Abelardo's there Abelardo how are you doing nice to see Great. you uh, thank you Pamela uh, um, but, but my question um, has to do with the, uh, the schedule of all of the activities uh, uh, because I live uh, in a Costa Rica, seven hours before you uh, in Britain. Uh, so I just want to be sure that uh, the schedules 
can be compatible for me. Well, the schedule for us starts at seven o'clock UK time, so I think that's in the morning. That's seven hours. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you have mornings free, then it's great. No, yeah, yeah, that, that's seven hours. I, I, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Does that include the discussion groups as yes, well? Yes, that uh, it does. Yeah, that includes the discussion oh, groups. Okay. So the discussion groups will be at the same time, seven o'clock on. Uh, sorry, my bad. Six thirty. Six thirty okay. uh, UK time on Thursdays. So okay. the discussion groups will be at the same time. Yeah, I remember that was a bit of an issue for you when you were looking at exploring Buddhism, wasn't it? So this yeah, is probably that's more. Yeah, this is probably more yeah. um, conducive to your circumstances. Um, That's great. We got there in the end, Abelardo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the evaluations, uh, those are on one's own time? Uh, no, we'll set, um, we'll set deadlines for the assessments. Um, and as I said before, if, um, if you want certification, uh, then the assessments are mandatory, um, and if not, then they're not mandatory. Um, but we'll have a deadline just because the the assessors need to have yeah. marked so, them in time for the next does, class. Sorry, uh, yeah, I, I meant the, if, if one uh, does the, the assessments during one's own schedule. Uh, sorry, I don't follow, yeah. Abelardo. If it's, Yes, yeah, yeah. As in, you can just do it in your own time at home. You yeah, don't, you don't have to do yeah. it during the class. Yeah, or any any given time, but as long as it's 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 sent in by this this the deadline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm with you. Yes, Thank you. absolutely. Thank you. That's fine. I'm clear. Okay. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. No problem. Thank you, Avalado. Uh, the next one is Gia, and is that Shambu? It is, it is. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, nice to see uh, anyway. you. <laughs> anyway, thank you for all the, the talks and everything, and uh, hello to everybody. I just wanted to know, uh, because uh, I uh, prefer to come to Zamyang for the class, you know, so will it be, uh, I don't know how it's going with the pandemic, but uh, will the class be uh, open and we can come to, the, uh, come to Zamyang rather than uh, doing it online if yes. you want to? Yeah, yeah. So the classes will be done uh, in person and online. So both options are available depending on. So, That's of it. course, Abelardo is in Costa Rica. Lucky yeah. him. <laughs> so he won't be coming to Jamyang, but he'll be able to join online. But yes, it's possible to come to Jamyang. Um, you know, we update our, you know, go, uh, our COVID guidance in line with, um, you know, the developing situation. So at the moment, we're asking people to wear a mask when they come to the class. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, it is possible to attend in person. That's great. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Shambu. Uh, the next one is Ali. Hi, thanks. Um, I was just wondering uh, two questions. One was about um, assessments. Yes. Um, I'm just curious about what <laughs> The assessments entail are we writing like 5,000 word essays or are we doing <laughs> shorter things and the other one or, or something else entirely um and the other one was um is there a sort of recommendation in terms of how much time we should be um uh assigning to to uh what we're doing outside of the classes so in, yeah just in terms of um, balancing it with other other stuff yeah, they're 20,000 word essays, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're actually, um, they're actually short, uh, short, short, short quiz questions. Okay. So they're not, they're, they're not too intensive. Um, but in terms of the amount of time that you need to dedicate to the course outside of, um, you know, official study hours, I'll let Geshler respond. Mm. 30 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hours a day. <laughs> I mean, that's true, right? The real Buddhist practice is 24 seven, but uh, yeah, of course. Uh, so that means that, yeah, it, one aspect is there are some suggested readings. So I think it's about, what is it? Maybe one or two hours a month or something. No? Something like that, next to the classes. So it's probably not that much in general speaking for discovering Buddhism. But of course, if you have more interest, and especially the Lamrim, as I just said, what we go over is, is kind of an overview of the spiritual path, right? So if you're more interested, there's a lot of more 
um, books you can read. So we have a kind of suggested reading list. Yeah, and then according to your time, you, you can pick out uh, the things uh, that, yeah, is according to, to what you can do or what you not can do. Yeah, so it's about, what is it, two, two hours, three hours a month, maybe, something like that. Yeah. Great, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. Um, and related to that, we've got a question in the chat, which is, um, what kind of resources are provided? Do you have to buy books? No, so the, um, all of the recommended readings will be uploaded to the learning platform that I showed in my presentation before, so you don't have to purchase any additional, uh, any additional readings. It will all be provided to you. Um, while I'm here, I'll just look at some of the other questions in the chat. Maybe this is one for Geshe-la. Will the course give the opportunity to discuss how Buddhism relates to the Western life in today's time? No. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, it will be, the presentation itself will be, you know, following a particular tradition, right? So there will be to get you the information of the spiritual part. But then in discussions and how to apply it in daily life, then we're going to talk about these things, right? And, and you know, how to, how to yeah solve problems in, in wherever, I mean, in modern society, so to say, in your daily life. So those examples will come up throughout the course. Yeah? Though the presentation will be traditional, but of course, uh, we have a different lives, so how do we actually uh, apply it in our daily to day basis of daily life? And also in the questions and answers, these issues will come up, right? So it's not that uh, I'm going to sit here and give you just and read from the book and give you the traditional kind of explanation and then say goodbye, <laughs> uh, good luck. It's not like that, right? So we, we go, because I'm a Westerner, you Westerners, we live in a modern society, and yeah, we have to see how we apply it in daily life and how we go into the spiritual path. Yeah? So also the tradition, of course, has to be explained well. So yeah, we will have both uh, aspects of that. Thank you, Geshe. Yeah. There's another one in the chat here, which is, um, I'm curious how this course relates to exploring Buddhism and basic programming. Is I, it progressive between the oh, courses? Yeah. And is there any overlap? Yeah. Yes. There is an overlap. <laughs> so, b basic program is, is a five-year program, which also has what we call the subject of the Lamrim, right? There's one text called the Middle-Length Lamrim. Yeah, so uh, that's much more elaborate uh, than discovering Buddhism, but it goes over the same structure. To get more understandings of individual aspects of the Lam Rim, then in the basic program there are also subjects like tenets, for example, or mind and awareness, you know, or Buddha potential. So in the basic program you have more in-depth aspects of the spiritual part to enlightenment, right? And that's also why it's five years and not two. Yeah. So some people, when they signed up for uh, exploring Buddhism, they said, oh, I'm so happy it's only three instead of five. <laughs> anyway, so then uh, that's the basic program is, yeah, the basic program is what it, it's, it's called basic, but actually it's quite in depth. Yeah, so the, the root of the basic program, and that's good to know, because the root of the basic program is this same, Lambrim. Only the different subjects are explained in more detail. In discovering Buddhism, the Lamrim is being explained in the same structure. Only the amount of information is a little bit less and a little bit more um, accessible, so to say. Yeah. Then exploring Buddhism, what we also run here, the three-year program, exploring Buddhism also has one model on the Lamrim, right? So exploring Buddhism is actually a little bit in between discovering Buddhism and the basic program. Yeah, that's initially how we developed it. But it also has uh, some models for people who are quite new. Yeah. Exploring Buddhism has also some more secular or universal aspects. Yeah, so the first model, as we did last year, was more about, you know, uh, the mind, so to say, and then we talked a lot about scientific aspects of the mind. And it has more things about truths, so it goes into different aspects of the Lamrim in separate models, right? And spends some more time on it than discovering Buddhism. 
But the other way around, in exploring Buddhism, the actual model on the stages of the path to enlightenment is only three weekends. While in exploring Buddhism, it's 13 models, yeah, spread over two years. So the stages of the path to enlightenment is a little bit more elaborate in the structure in the Discovering Buddhism than in Exploring Buddhism. So some of the Exploring Buddhist students, they might like, to, if they're not familiar yet with the, the whole stages of the path to enlightenment, yeah, they might be able to get something out of this course as well. So that's kind of, um, yeah, some overlaps and, and some differences. Yeah, is that clear or not? Yeah, is it? Great. Uh, it's clear to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Geshe-la. Um By the way, you'll hear geshe a lot. La is a Tibetan honorific term, so it just means Geshe. Yeah, it's an, it, 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 yeah, because people, are, somebody asked that once. What's La? <laughs> yeah. Geshe is his title. La is an affectionate term, so geshe <laughs> <laughs> Um Okay, so there's a couple more questions in the chat. Um, okay, somebody asks if there is an alternative way to pay. At the moment, the donations have to be made by a debit or credit card. Um, but if that is an issue for you, then um, get in touch with us and we'll see if there's some kind of um, alternatives that we can arrange. At the moment there isn't, but um, we'll try and work something out with you. Um, and related to that, somebody asks if, um, if the donations can be made for each session. Um, so unfortunately, that won't be possible. Um, we've set it up. Um, if you check the uh, Discovering Buddhism page on the website, you can see that we've set. You can see how we've uh, calculated the monthly donation. Um, but if uh, you know, as I mentioned before, if um, you know, as a monthly donation, if that's um, a little bit too high, then uh, let us know, and we can arrange a um, reduced monthly donation for you. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, checking the other questions. Um, somebody says, we'll be in London for six months and in Italy for six months. Lovely. Um, so is there a different approach to the course between attending uh, the centre and online? So I think that question is about whether the two are mutually exclusive. They're not. While you're in London, you can attend in person. While you're in Italy, you can attend online, there's no problem. Uh, okay. Yep, cool. All right then, and uh, I think that's everything in the chat. So back to the people who have got their hands raised. Divya is next. Thank you for being so patient, Divya. You've had your hand up for a while. That is okay. But hi, thank you, Kamala. Thank you, Geshe-la. Um, actually, one of the questions Geshe-la just answered, so... Um, the other question I had was, Kamala, you mentioned certifications in relation to assessments. What are the certifications for? So the certification is, um, so these courses, uh, Discovering Buddhism, Basic Program, Exploring Buddhism, is, uh, are, are, these courses are all developed by FPMT. So that is the international organization to which Jamyang is affiliated to. Um, and they provide an official um, an official certification to those people who complete all of the components of the course. And the reason for that really is um, primarily if you want to go on to other courses, um, then you can, then sometimes they have prerequisites. Um, yeah. And that prerequisite may be, for example, to have complete Discovering Buddhism. So normally that's a prerequisite of doing basic program. Um, okay. So yeah, then, then you can, and, and, and because um, it's recognized by FPMT, you can use that at any, any one of the centers around the world that is running basic program, you could use that as your um, certification. Yeah. So does that make sense? Oh yes. Um, sorry, I'm just looking to uh, Venerable Fabienne on my left who's saying that as well, um, it's, it's a prerequisite to if you want to um, apply for a registered teacher status with FBMT. So it's kind of the beginning of the pathway to becoming a registered teacher. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. No problem. Um, who have we got next? Alan. Hi, Alan. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for your time for the introduction. And uh, yeah, so a couple of quick questions. The first one is, is there, is, is there a weekend? Is there any weekends? Is it all... Is it any weekends or over two years? And is it always on a Thursday night over two years? It's on a Thursday. Um, I'm not sure actually when the um, review classes take place. I think they're also on a Thursday in January, February, and March. Yeah, so everything's on a Thursday evening. Okay. Yeah. But you know, the recordings will be posted to the learning platform as well. So um, if for whatever reason you're unable to make you know, one of the Thursday evenings, there's always the opportunity to catch up. Okay. Thank you, Alan. And uh, the next one, and possibly the last one, is Matt. Thank you for waiting, Matt. That's okay, Camilo. Um, thank you, Gestula, Fabian, uh, Fabian, this has been brilliant. Um, I just want to ask quickly about the ambassadorship. Mm -hmm. Could you just talk a li little bit more about the sort of facilitator um, training mentorship, how that works? Is that quite structured or is it quite informal? Just be interested to hear uh, a bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a new program that we've started. Um, uh, what we're going to do is invite different people with um, different, ex you know, kind of ped pedagogical and educational expertises, um, if that's a word. Yeah, anyway, uh, different um, educational expertise to come in and uh, provide skills training. So it could be, for example, um, you know, we might get an educational psychologist to come in and, and uh, teach the uh, mentees, um, you know, different skills related to that. Um, in addition to that, we'll have some um, peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities. So you can kind of practice your facilitation with other people. Um, they'll be shadowing and observing um, some of the facilitate some of the existing facilitators who are running the entry level courses, um, and then gradually building up to co-facilitating with them, perhaps leading meditations in their classes. So it's kind of like a gradual step by step learning with um, um, a few dif you know different components. So peer to peer learning, skills training, and also um, you know um, I guess you would say on the job practicing for one of a better phrase. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Abelardo. Uh, yes, uh, this question is for Geshela, uh, <laughs> I may. Uh, um, I, I have a, a, a diploma course in uh, the, the, the Landa program in uh, Buddhist philosophy at the uh, Tibet House, New Delhi. Mm. Uh, that was a year and a half. Uh, program. Uh, I'm very interested in the practice that dimension of uh, discovering Buddhism. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, my question is, uh, if th this is right for me, uh, with that background. Also, I'm 73, so I want to make the best of, of, of the years <laughs> I have left uh, of lucid, lucid mind, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. Never, never too old to, to study and start, right? So the diploma course you do with Geshe Dori Dandala in, in, in Delhi, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a kind of more academic-like approach, right? It's yeah. more the philosophical aspect. Where discovering yeah. Buddhism is a little bit more a practical approach to the spiritual part, so to say. Yeah, so the combination of the two we see in, in, in basic program, for example, right? So that means we need both. We need a good understanding of the philosophy, right? And we need a good understanding of a spiritual part. So discovering Buddhism moves to this particular spiritual part, model by model, right? So that's the structure of how do I actually become a Buddha? Yeah, so yeah. that's the kind of the basis of, of discovering Buddhism. So then the combi is, of course, the best, yeah? Because we need a good academic understanding of philosophy and then put it in the spiritual part. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, that's and you, yeah. And now you're still, yeah, I wouldn't say too old, you're still young, fresh, and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. and another point is, um, uh, I would like to study on, on my own, a uh, parallel, uh, the Lambrin Channel. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. 
Is that, is that compatible? Uh, that is yeah. very compatible, and that is one be considered not only very compatible, but also perfect. Yeah. Okay. Because the Lamrim Chemo is one of the most elaborate Lamrims we have. It's very yeah. detailed. So without a little bit of understanding of philosophy, it's not easy, especially the inside section, right? But right. it's a very good text to combine it with discovering Buddhism, because it gives you the whole overview of the Lambrim in a very precise and extensive way. Right? So, yeah, it's perfect. We, we're going to touch about the similar, for example, the outline you will see in the Lambrim Chemo is right. very similar, almost the same as we have in Discovering Buddhism. Yeah, so, yeah, it's the perfect uh, suggested reading. I won't suggest it to everybody who are quite new, but if you already have some background in, in Buddhism, then it's the perfect suggested reading for uh, discovering Buddhism, yeah. I have the long version and also the intermediate. Uh, so uh, which one would you advise? I would advise both, but uh, <laughs> depending on your time, right? Yeah. So you can uh, maybe start with, get an overview in a more uh, short Lamrim text, right? And then when you progress, read sections you're studying in, in the more extensive version, and then later on read the whole extensive version. Yeah, that's a kind Thank of you. structure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abelardo. Thank you, Keshela. Oh, I just wanted to um, follow up on uh, Matt's question regarding facilitator training. So while it is an integral uh, component of the Inclusivity Ambassador Scheme, um, eventually we will be opening up the facilitator um, training program um, to students more generally. There'll be a, a more general application process um, just to... Just to um, you know, make people aware of that. Okay, Ali. Uh, that might have somewhat just answered my question, but um, maybe not. Um, in terms of the ambassador program, I wondered if you were able to um, give more of an indication of the extra time commitment that that involves. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, if we're unable to apply for that in because of the extra time commitments, is there the possibility of um, applying to do that or participating in, in doing that at a, at a later time, um, which I think what you just said indicates that maybe, maybe that is, um, mm. but yeah, if, yes, yeah, certainly, yeah. like yeah. how much, how much time that, that sort of involves. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ali. So um, we try to, uh, we try to make the program as cohesive and uh, and holistic as possible without a kind of overburdening the students with the time commitment. Um, so this year, I think we've you know it's uh, in addition to their um, to their general studies, the ambassadors will probably have to put in about ten hours, ten hours on you know for the year on, on top of it. You know, so this is this will be split up between um, safeguarding trainings skills trainings and um, some uh, some kind of shadowing of um, entry-level facilitators. Um, maybe a little bit more than that, but we're in the region of, of 10 to 15 hours over the, over the course of the year. Okay. Yeah? Great. Does that help? Yeah, that does help. Thank you. And, and yeah, and also just to be clear, um, if we're unable, if we're still unable to apply for that now, it sounds like there's still an opportunity to be able to apply to do yeah. something like that at, yeah. at a later point. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks so much. No problem. Okay, uh, Tracy. Hi, thank you. I was just um, wanted to ask a question about the course. If there's something perhaps you're struggling with in particular during one of the sessions, would you have access to contact someone in between the sessions to perhaps go through things a, a little bit clearer with you? Because um, I know when I've read some Buddhist texts in the past, I've sometimes struggled with certain aspects of it. And it was just to check that in between sessions, could you contact someone or can you only discuss any issues or, or problems you're having in the actual sessions themselves? That might be a possibility, Tracy, uh, depending on the availability of our teaching assistants. But primarily, that's what the review classes are for, right? Is that we kind of digest the material 
um, come up with all of our problems <laughs> and then bring them to the review classes to discuss them with everybody else. How healthy does that sound? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's 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 kind of that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the approach. Um, that's great. Okay. Yep, that's grand. Thank you. All right. Uh, and um, is there something in the chat? No, uh, that's not a question. That's just somebody letting us know they need to go. Okay. Um, if uh, are there any more questions? Going once. Going twice, going three times. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Um, it's been really, really fun to chat with you. I've really enjoyed spending this hour with you on a Sunday evening, and I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic week ahead. And um, if you have any questions um, that didn't spring to mind uh, while you're on the chat today, then just send me an email, as I said, to spc at gemyang.co.uk and I will try to answer them for you. If all of your questions are answered and you're raring to go, then um, go to gemyang.co.uk and you can start registering. All right, thank you so much. Take care and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye.